The lectures and writings of Dr. Jordan B. Peterson have taken the world by storm. His followers on social media number in the millions. His book 12 Rules for Life has been an international bestseller. His memes appear all over the internet, and he must be one of the most successful public intellectuals of the last 50 years. But how much do fans and foes of the controversial professor really know about him? How much do you know about him? Perhaps we can arrive at some kind of answer by taking the Jordan Peterson quiz. Here's how it'll work. I'll ask you 30 multiple choice questions, and after each one, I'll provide you with the answer. Yes, the answers will influence your responses, but that's better than going through the questions twice. Please write your score, out of 30, in the comments section. If you score 30 out of 30, you can contact me to receive this tailor-made paper airplane, though I can't guarantee it'll reach your place of residence, especially now, because it's windy. Anyway, grab a pen and paper and keep score. Ready? Let's begin. Question 1. Which of the following statements did Jordan Peterson make during a public lecture? A. I urge young people to try to earn an undergraduate degree in the social or natural sciences because an educated citizenry is vital for a healthy society. B. We must protect democracy from authoritarians in the far right. And so, in this lecture, that's what I'm going to explain how to do. C. No one wants to think they're a Nazi, but everyone is one. The answer is C. He made this statement shortly after discussing the topic of satanic possession. Question 2. On the Joe Rogan experience, Peterson said he gifted his father, Walter Peterson, a flag. What kind of flag, and why? A. The provincial flag of Alberta, because the old flag was faded. B. An imitation Nazi war ensign, because his father had been following his career as a public intellectual. C. The Canadian flag, because his father was, quote-unquote, quietly patriotic. The answer is B. An imitation Nazi war ensign, specifically a Kekistan flag, which is a white supremacist or neo-Nazi icon that features four Ks, one more than the traditional three Ks. Question 3. When Jordan Peterson spoke in Norway with Dave Rubin, he shrugged off accusations that he was like Hitler. What did he then criticize the Canadian government for? A. Drafting hate speech legislation to prosecute a neo-Nazi. B. Failing to provide clean drinking water to indigenous communities. C. Failing to provide adequate services to veterans who suffered from mental health issues, such as PTSD. The answer is A. The neo-Nazi was German citizen and Canadian resident Ernst Sundel, who collaborated with another neo-Nazi from Alberta named James Keegstra, who taught Nazi ideology in his social studies classes. Gosh, imagine that, a Canadian educator teaching Nazism. Keegstra taught in Eckville, Alberta, not to be confused with Fairview, Alberta, which is Peterson's hometown. Fairview is where Walter Peterson lives. You'll recall that Walter was the recipient of the imitation Nazi flag. Question 4. What job does Jordan Peterson routinely say he could have done with enjoyment and happiness? A. He could have been a librarian because he worked in the library in Fairview, Alberta, and really liked it. B. He could have been a biologist because he's an admirer of Charles Darwin and Richard Dawkins. C. He could have worked as a Nazi camp guard, taken Jews off trains, and worked them to death. The answer is C. Question 5. In Peterson's self-help book, 12 Rules for Life, what job does he say he has the capacity, note the present tense, to do? A. He says he has the capacity to act like a Nazi prison guard or torturer of children in a dungeon. B. He says he has the capacity to volunteer at a soup kitchen at least once a month. C. He says he has the capacity to be a carpenter, but finds the life of a professor more stimulating. The answer is A. It's fascinating that Peterson says, in the same sentence, he has the capacity to act like a Nazi camp guard and a torturer of children in a dungeon, because at Auschwitz, the Nazis tortured children in underground laboratories, for example by performing amputations without anesthetic. Question 6. To Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson has said, quote, I can see that as an aspect of myself, end quote. What did the word that refer to? A. Being a good Samaritan. B. Being a father who tries to do his best, but sometimes fails. C. Being a Nazi. The answer is C. Question 7. At Harvard, Peterson said to his students, So, a group answers the question, What is the good? What was the answer to this question? A. Helping oneself by helping the group. B. Well, it depends what you mean by good. C. Being a Nazi. The answer is C. Question 8. In Norway with Dave Rubin, after shrugging off accusations that he was like Hitler 
and criticizing the Canadian government for prosecuting a neo-Nazi, Peterson recounted and laughed at a quote-unquote joke. What was this joke about? A. Himself. It was a self-deprecating joke. B. Dave Rubin's remarkable inability to say anything even remotely thoughtful. C. Gassing Jews in concentration camps. The answer is C. Gassing Jews in concentration camps. Peterson said that giving his father the imitation Nazi Warrenson was also a joke, and he has defended the alt-right for jokingly signaling to each other with hate symbols. Question 9. Who has Peterson said cannot be blamed for their role in World War II? A. Neville Chamberlain B. Benito Mussolini C. Adolf Hitler The answer is C. Adolf Hitler. Peterson said, quote, You can't blame it on Hitler, end quote. By it, he meant whatever vague, unstated events may have transpired during Hitler's reign. Question 10. What does Jordan Peterson say about Hitler in his book, Maps of Meaning? A. Adolf Hitler's contempt for other people may have been the result of childhood trauma. B. We should read Hitler, although not for his literary style. C. Granted the opportunity, how many of us would not be Hitlers? The answer is C. Note how granted the opportunity, how many of us would not be Hitlers is a little like no one wants to think they're a Nazi, but everyone is one. Question 11. At Harvard, what did Peterson say about Hitler? A. I do actually believe that Hitler was not a particularly pathological individual. B. As far as I'm concerned, Hitler was the most reprehensible figure of the 20th century. C. Hitler was evil itself, and so, you know, you gotta hand it to the Allies. They really did the right thing. The answer is A. Hitler was not a particularly pathological individual. Peterson has mentioned a U.S. intelligence report that concluded that Hitler was a borderline schizophrenic. He included the fact that Carl Jung secretly contributed to this report, but omitted the diagnosis. Question 12. What has Peterson said about Hitler and the dominance hierarchy? A. Hitler, you know, I spent a lot of time thinking about that guy, and what he did was, he created the dominance hierarchy to exploit the most primitive people in German society. They were kind of like lobsters, actually. B. Hitler climbed the ranks of the hierarchy in a remarkable manner. C. Hitler was all about hierarchies, because hierarchies are fundamentally exploitative, let's say, and, like, we need to exploit people, that's why we're here. The answer is B. Hitler climbed the hierarchy, which is what Peterson urges his followers, or lobsters, to do. Question 13. How did Peterson begin a talk in 2017 at the Ottawa Public Library? A. He said that earlier that day he had paid a visit to the city's National Holocaust Monument. B. He said that when he was 13, he realized he could have brutalized and murdered Jews at Auschwitz. C. He said people should be careful when criticizing Hitler because Hitler was an organizational genius. The answer is B. When he was 13, he knew he could have brutalized and killed Jews at Auschwitz, and today he knows he could have brutalized and killed Jews at Auschwitz. Question 14. What did Peterson say about the alt-right during his talk in Ottawa? A. That the movement was benevolent but incomplete. B. That it was pathetic and juvenile. C. That instead of blaming others for their problems, alt-right types should grow the hell up and realize that they are the problem. The answer is A. That the alt-right was benevolent but incomplete. Question 15. Peterson became famous for battling Canadian compelled speech laws, that is, Bill C-16. Who did he blame for such laws? A. He said they were the upshot of the Marxist element and a communist plot. B. He said they had been imported by the Liberal Party from Communist China. C. He said they must have been the product of technical error, because for humans to create such legislation was almost impossible. The answer is A. He said they were the upshot of the Marxist element and a communist plot hatched by the Canadian government. Hold on, wasn't there a 20th century dictator who accused the Weimar Republic of being run by quote-unquote Jewish elements? What was his name again? Black hair? Tiny mustache? Question 16. What did Peterson's lawyer say about Bill C-16 during a Senate committee hearing? A. That the Canadian government ought to be ashamed of itself. B. That Canadians would not stand for being told what they could and could not say. C. That the law does not seem to imply any manner of compelled speech. The answer is C. That the law, quote, does not seem to imply any manner of compelled speech, end quote. Question 17. 
After the one-man crusade against non-existent communist Canadian compelled speech laws failed, what was Peterson's message for Americans? A. That if they had a choice between vacationing in Canada or Mexico, they should choose Mexico. B. That Americans had compelled speech laws too, but they just didn't know about it yet. C. That they were lucky to live in a country that hadn't been ruined by socialism. The answer is B. That Americans had compelled speech laws too, but they just didn't know about it yet. Question 18. In Peterson's self-help book, 12 Rules for Life, he floats the idea that lying is okay. Just before doing so, which book does he quote on the art of lying? A. Fyodor Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. B. Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf. C. Alexander Solzhenitsyn's Gulag Archipelago. The answer is B. Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf. Question 19. To his students, how has Jordan Peterson characterized Adolf Hitler? A. As a psychopath of the highest order. B. As an outstanding orator, but a fifth-rate military strategist. C. As a canny, canny person with a brilliant, brilliant sense of drama. The answer is C. Question 20. What did Peterson say about the Third Reich at the University of Toronto? A. That the Nazis had all sorts of positive reasons for what they were doing. B. That when Germany occupied, let's say, the Rhineland in 1936, England and France should have taken action. C. That you need to imagine yourselves as the victims, like being stripped of your rights and persecuted and ghettoized, by putting yourself in the place of the innocent, so to speak, you can generate empathy for other people. The answer is A, that, quote, the Nazis had all sorts of positive reasons for what they were doing, end quote. When Peterson talks of World War II, he nearly always speaks from the perspective of the Nazis, and he counsels against having empathy. Question 21. When Peterson talks about the Big Five model of personality and focuses on conscientiousness, he usually associates this trait with orderliness. What does he often do to provide visual examples of orderliness? A. He shows images of people queuing for the train in Tokyo. B. He shows a video of a mother teaching her daughter how to make a daily planner. C. He shows pictures of Nuremberg rallies and wows at all the order. The answer is C. Question 22. While showing pictures of an orderly Nuremberg rally to students at the University of Toronto in 2014, Peterson goose-stepped and gave the Nazi salute. For how long did he give the salute? A. 6 seconds B. 15 seconds C. 48 seconds The answer is B. 15 seconds Question 23. Peterson often boasts about Hitler's ability to give the Nazi salute for long periods of time. How long? A. 15 seconds B. 15 minutes. C. 8 hours. The answer is C. 8 hours. Peterson's 15 seconds is impressive, but he still has some work to do. Question 24. What book has Peterson recommended to a client with profound psychological impairment so as to correct her view that people were literally angels? A. Christopher Browning's Ordinary Men, about Hitler's murderous order police. B. Alexander Solzhenitsyn's Gulag Archipelago, about Soviet labor camps. C. Hitler's Table Talk, which Peterson has read multiple times and rates as amazing. The answer is A. Ordinary Men. Do you understand how reading graphic descriptions of genocide could correct delusional beliefs about people being angels? Question 25. During a public lecture in 2018, what did Peterson tell the audience they would have done if they had lived in occupied Holland? A. They would have rejoiced when that country was liberated by the Canadian army. B. They would have enjoyed the benefits of living in an orderly society that was free from communist chaos. C. They would not have helped protect Jews like Anne Frank. The answer is C. Question 26. How has Jordan Peterson routinely characterized Adolf Hitler? A. As a genocidal maniac. B. As someone who was neurotic and deeply troubled. C. As a god. The answer is C, as a god. Question 27. When Peterson is asked if he believes in God, how does he tend to respond? A. It depends what you mean by in. B. Religion is a theater for fools. C. I act as though God exists. The answer is C. He acts as though God exists. He means God the Father. Question 28. What has Peterson said about a propaganda picture of Hitler surrounded by admirers? A. There's Hitler as wise father. B. There's Hitler as, you know, knight of the faith. C. There's the sort of lowbrow propaganda that appealed to ordinary German lobsters, let's say. The answer is A. 
There's Hitler as wise father. Here's the image he showed and the full text of what he said. And then, there's Hitler as wise father. You see he's surrounded by people there who focused in on him as though he's of archetypal import. It's a good thing Peterson doesn't resort to such crass propagandistic techniques. For example, here. Or here. Question 29. Bearing in mind that Peterson often talks and writes about satanic possession, typically in connection with diseases such as epilepsy and schizophrenia, who did he tell Joe Rogan was satanically possessed? A. His father, Walter. B. God the Father, hence why in the Old Testament he wreaks so much destruction. C. Adolf Hitler. The answer is C. And the last question, question 30, Peterson has suggested to his followers that they ask themselves a question about the results of the Nuremberg trials, or what he has called the Nuremberg judgment. What question? A. If the Soviets had conquered Germany before the Western Allies reached the German border, do you think they would have held public trials? B. Should the Allies have tried Hitler in absentia? C. Are you going to accept that judgment or not? The answer is C. Peterson was hinting to his listeners that they should not accept the guilty verdicts of the Nuremberg trials. Instead, they should stand up straight with their shoulders back, hone their intelligence by going to the gym, and avoid higher education, which has become overrun by the Marxist element. Peterson has floated the idea that the Nuremberg trials had nothing to do with justice, that they were solely the upshot of Victor's revenge. I'm confident that many of his followers would agree with his view, because his followers seem to agree with all of his views. Okay then, write your score below. Be sure to check out The Devil and His Do, How Jordan Peterson Plagiarizes Adolf Hitler, and please hit like and subscribe. Oh, and as for the aforementioned airplane, J.P. Fan should start looking for the parachutes. Or, to mix my metaphors, if they don't try and leave the lobster trap, they could be headed for the pot. Until next time.